What's up, my comic comrades? I'm very excited because not only did we get issue 1000 of Detective Comics this week, today is, of course, Batman's 80th birthday. That's right, the Cape Crusader has been around for 80 years, and being that he's my favorite fictional character of all time, along with being a massive pop culture icon, we had to celebrate his birthday the right way. So what could be a better tribute than to highlight what is arguably the best interpretation of Batman from any form of media? And that's Batman the Animated Series. I've said it many times, but I was only five years old when the series debuted on Fox. And it's without a doubt the beginning of my love for not only the Cape Crusader, but comics in general. Anyway, I know for me personally, one of the coolest storylines from Batman the Animated Series is the glorious feature film that spawned from the weekly show. Batman Mask of the Phantasm. A huge part of what's made Batman such a compelling and celebrated hero over 80 years is his amazing rogues gallery. And Phantasm is one of those rogues who doesn't get anywhere near the attention she deserves. As her existence made for one of Batman's most compelling origin tales to date, both in or outside of comics. Obviously there's going to be spoilers for Batman Mask of the Phantasm, but honestly, in the off chance you haven't seen the movie by now, what are you doing? For real though, what in God's name are you waiting for? It's available in glorious HD on the DC Universe streaming service, or you could buy it on Blu-ray via Amazon. Either way, it's fantabulous. In fact, I own three copies. The original DVD, which I had signed by the voice of Batman himself, Kevin Conroy. Then I bought it when it was re-released on Blu-ray in 2017. And lastly, I bought the complete Batman animated series collector box set when it was released last year. So, sorry not sorry. Anyway, the Phantasm made her first appearance in Batman Mask of the Phantasm on Christmas Day in 1993. She was created by Alan Burnett and Paul Dini. Right off the bat, the character's design looks epic. She has a Grim Reaper-esque look, as the co-creator Alan Burnett wanted Phantasm to resemble a Christmas Carol's Ghost of Christmas future. So much so that they had the Joker mention the similarity in the film. Now as for the Phantasm, her real name is Andrea Beaumont. Andrea was Bruce's first real love interest. They would meet in a cemetery while Bruce was visiting his parents' grave, and Andrea was visiting her mother's. During this this time, they were both attending Gotham University and eventually fell in love with one another. This makes Bruce incredibly happy, as falling in love tends to do to someone. But now he just wants to live a normal happy life with Andrea, but he's torn as he promised his murdered parents that he'd war on crime. So torn in fact, he even goes back to his parents' grave all sad and depressed, being like, look, I didn't expect to be happy when I made this promise to devote my entire life to fighting crime. I can't do both, and I just want to be happy, so instead I'll just give a bunch of my inheritance to the GCPD so they can protect the city. That's their job anyway. And at this point, he's not even Batman yet. He's still training to be Batman and figuring all of that out. But he's like, look, I have to break this promise. I'm happy now. So in this origin, believe it or not, Bruce initially abandoned crime fighting and proposed to Andrea on Wayne Manor's estate. And after giving her a big ol' rock for her finger, the two accidentally discovered the Batcave, which is obviously important later on. But Batman's story, no matter who tells it, has to be a tragedy in order for him to be Batman. The next day, Andrea breaks off their engagement. Even when Bruce is about to get over his parents' death and be happy, he still can't catch a break. You see, Andrea is the daughter of a wealthy businessman, Carl Beaumont, and we learned that her father had been working with a mafia, setting up dummy corporations for them. To make matters worse, Carl had embezzled from the mob, so when they found out, they're like, give us back our money or we're gonna kill you and your daughter. But obviously, Carl's not able to pay them back, so Andrea is forced to move with her father to Europe, which is why she had to break off her engagement with Bruce although she never told him why. She just literally left the ring with Alfred so he could give it back to Bruce. That's cold. Sometime later, Carl's able to repay them, but it's not enough. The Mafia wants interest compounded in blood. So they eventually find him and send a hitman who later becomes the Joker. Yeah, you heard me correct. It's freaking awesome. We even see the Joker before he became the Joker. Anyway, he kills Carl, which sends Andrea down a very dark path. She patiently waits for several years, planning her revenge by killing all the men in the Mafia that ruined her life. Eventually, when the time was right, she returned to Gotham donning a costume similar to that of the Grim Reaper and started killing every man responsible for her father's death. Her costume being somewhat similar to Batman had the police and the victims thinking it was Batman responsible for these murders, as the Phantasm would only be briefly seen in the shadows. Andrea eventually sees Batman in the graveyard investigating who's killing all these mobsters. But when she sees him, he flees, but she immediately realized it was Bruce behind the cowl. Batman would later discover a link between the mobsters and Andrea's dad, Carl Beaumont. So he met with Andrea to question her. But she came up with a story to convince Bruce that it was actually her father killing all these people as the Phantasm and that she came back to Gotham to stop him. Though that sounds legit, this is the world's greatest detective. So let's be honest, the only reason why he believed her is because he was booty blinded. Long story short, Bruce finds out that Andrea's dad was actually killed several years ago by the mob and that in fact the Phantasm is Andrea. And Andrea has one last person on her list to kill, which is the Joker as he was the hitman hired to kill her dad 
all those years ago before he became the Clown Prince of Crime. So Andrew tracks the Joker down at his hideout, the now abandoned Gotham World Fairgrounds. But he too had figured out she was the Phantasm and was able to counter her initial attacks. And right when he was about to kill her by sucking her into a jet turbine, Batman shows up and saves her on the Bat Cycle. Andrew then tries to justify all of her actions to Batman by saying, They took everything, Bruce. My dad, my life, you. I'm not saying it's right or even sane, but it's all I've got left. They had to pay. So good. This story, character, and movie is so well done, it hurts my feelings. I know that doesn't even make sense, but that's how good it is. Batman then begs for her to stop, but she doesn't listen and eventually is able to get her hands on the Joker and just disappears with him inside of a cloud of smoke. While this is happening, the fairgrounds are blowing up due to bombs planted by the Joker. Batman, of course, is able to escape, but assumes Andrea and the Joker have died from the explosions. Until one night, he finds her locket in the Batcave that has a picture of both Bruce and her inside of it and the film ends with Andrea sailing away on a ship. Awesome, right? This movie is insanely epic, and I love how the villain is so deeply tied to Bruce's origin and journey to become Batman. It just makes for such a complex and compelling story of love, loss, right, and wrong. The story deals with questions like, can you ever be happy? Should you give up things and break promises to be happy? The film just asks a bunch of questions and has a ton of complex adult themes. Mask of the Phantasm is a prime example of what made Batman the Animated Series so great for both kids and adults. It truly shows why it's a timeless take on The Dark Knight. Anyway, Andrea's adventures as the Phantasm didn't end after this film. We would next see her in the comic titled Batman and Robin Adventures Annual 1 in November of 1996, and the story called Shadow of the Phantasm. Many people might not know this, but this story is actually a direct sequel to Mask of the Phantasm. In Mask of the Phantasm, a character by the name of Arthur Reeves had been driven mad by the Joker. And in this story, we see him determined to exact revenge on Andrea, aka the Phantasm. Then in Batman Adventures Shadows and Masks, Andrea goes undercover in the Black Mask group, the False Face Society. She then comes face to face with Bruce once again and tells him not to interfere with her operation. And he's like, yeah, that's not gonna happen because you're a killer. I'm not gonna give too much more than that away, but she does fight back her on the story and obviously tries to kill Black Mask. Now her next appearance that I'm gonna mention is probably her most popular one outside of Mask of the Phantasm. And that's during the Just League Unlimited episode titled Epilogue. This story takes place in the Batman Beyond era, so Andrea is now an elderly woman. In this episode, we find out that Amanda Waller has hired Andrea as the Phantasm to murder Terry McGinnis' parents when he was just a little boy. Now you may be wondering, why Terry McGinnis? What made him so special? Well, a few years before his birth, Waller had Terry's dad injected with a nanotech solution that rewrote his reproductive material into an exact copy of Bruce's. So when the child was born, it would be Bruce's half-clone. She called this the Batman Beyond Project. Man, I love the DC animated universe. Anyway, like I said before, Waller hired Phantasm to kill Terry's parents, as she said, the psychological trauma of his parents being killed in front of him would give him the push towards becoming Batman's successor. But the Phantasm abandons her hit just moments before, as she realized she was not able to completely tear an innocent child's life apart. She later argues with Waller, saying that the murder of Terry's parents would defile the Batman's legacy by breaking Batman's rule of never taking a life. This would mark the end of Amanda Waller's Batman Beyond project. But as fate would have it, Terry became Bruce's successor anyway, Batman Beyond, one of the coolest iterations of the character ever. And lastly, we would see the Phantasm in the Batman Beyond 2.0 comic. In this story, the Phantasm is hired by Amanda Waller once again, this time to find and kill the great-grandnephew of Joe Chill, Jake Chill, as he killed Terry McGinnis' father. So she was hired to kill Jake to ensure that Batman wouldn't kill him. But now, my friends, with all that fantastic backstory out of the way, let's talk about some powers and abilities. Andrea is a very skilled martial artist, having trained since she was a teenager. She's so good in hand-to-hand -hand combat, in fact, that she was able to hold her own against Bruce. She's also a very skilled athlete, mercenary, and all-around tactical thinker. As the Phantasm, she wears a protective bodysuit that protects her from most impacts and attacks. As for weapons, on her left hand, she has a gauntlet that's able to generate smoke for stealth and misdirection. Because of this, she uses it for both defensive and offensive attacks. On her right hand, she has a scythe-bladed gauntlet. Her mask has a built-in voice changer that makes her sound like her father. It also has breathing filters to protect her from toxins and smoke, as well as having special eye lenses that have night vision, which allows her to move quickly inside of her smoke. But all this brings us to reading recommendations. Well, it's actually a combo recommendation. Watch or rewatch Batman Mask of the Phantasm, then read the comic book follow-up sequel to the movie, Batman and Robin Adventures Annual 1, next continue with Batman Adventures Shadows and Masks, and wrap it up with Batman Beyond 2.0, Mark of the Phantasm. And that does it for today's episode, my friends, but we want to say a huge congratulations to DC Comics on 80 years of Batman, along with all the creators, writers, and artists who helped shape eight decades of glorious Dark Knight mythology. Thank you from the bottom of my Batman loving heart. With that said, remember to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Links for that is in the description below. But I'll see your lovely faces next time when I talk about all things comics.